hear the Maryland community loud and clear. They want me to bring my A game to the DMV area. Just because they didn't get the deep dive dynasty series doesn't mean I was going to leave them hanging. Hey, they deserve a full rebuild. So we'll turn to the rebuild specialist once more, Sir Sponge. It has been a bummer to see this team stuck in a perpetual state of mid. So it's our job to take them over the hump. The only thing that could be more of a bummer is I hear rumors the checkered helmet's not in the game. I guess we will have to keep swimming without it. Terps just lost long-term quarterback Tagovailoa and we'll have to learn to live without him. This team went eight and five last season, which isn't bad, but there's a new look in the Big Ten and there'll be plenty of hurdles to go over. Speaking of new look Big Ten, we play USC in week eight and then Oregon Ducks in week 11. I guess we're relying on young studs like Roman Hemby and making sure they don't hit the portal. Starting off, I'm gonna give freshman Brandon Jacob the red shirt. He's a 72 overall, which is promising. However, there is a senior right now leading the group. It's not gonna hurt to go ahead and give red shirts to a lot of the freshmen that are buried on the depth chart. This ensures we have longevity for the future because we might need guys like Mike Tenney who are seventh on the depth chart to step up in the years to come. In my opinion, this is a big strength. Six freshman cornerbacks with room to grow. To stay on top, we need to always be crewing. So we're sorted by the interest panel here. Just gonna add a few of the guys that are at positions of need as well as high star potential. What is this? A five star corner has number one interest in us right now. Heck yeah. I've only done a few rebuilds so far, but this is clearly the number one amount of prospects I've ever seen interested in us as their number one choice. Four star running back, Steven Morris. Go ahead and add a couple more four stars. Maybe Jimmy Byron will come in and show this quarterback room what's up. There are other five star prospects not locked out to us, but Melvin Bailey's the only one that's got us in the top eight. Sorting by national rank, Let's start off with Mitch Hicks, the cornerback five-star prospect. He's true to that rating. Melvin Bailey is next, the five-star corner also up there. As commonplace, you'll see me handing out scholarships to practically everyone on this list. It is low risk, high reward. Jimmy Byron, the quarterback gem, four-star. We need to bring him in. Straight out of Maryland, this would be a hometown favorite. Bust for Cole Rabe. This running back was pretty interested in us and boom, Stephen Morris is a gem right out of Virginia. That is one of our pipeline areas, 92 speed. I see some good abilities already starting to identify balanced arm bar head first. I'm gonna do what it takes to beat out Penn State. Bruce is also a gem. This quarterback even has more throw power than the last one, so heck, I know the other guy was a hometown hero, but if we can't get him, Bruce is just as good scholarship offered. One more quarterback to scout out. They're all gems, so we'll be happy with any of the three. It's important to scout out some of the three stars as well because those guys actually move pretty quick. But since a lot of these guys are already number one interest in us, I'm gonna go ahead and give scholarships to all of them. Unless they're not number one interest, like this guy, we'll scout them out. But if they're number one, just gonna give them a scholarship and not worry about it too much. As the recruiting board fluctuates throughout the year, let's keep our team needs in mind. Essentially, offensive line and running backs are a necessity. A couple defensive linemen, but the glaring need is obviously linebacker. With that revelation, let's use our first points to upgrade the linebacker skill tree. Preseason's over, let the games begin. Penn State is gaining on Mitch Hicks, so I went ahead and offered him the house. Falling a little behind on Melvin because everyone's offering him scholarships, so will I. I know I said cornerbacks are already strong in the preseason, season, but when you have five stars like that just sitting there, what am I going to do? Of course, I'm going to offer them everything I can get. I guess I'll hang in there with Josh Earl for a week, even though we're falling down on the list just a little bit. This cornerback's a bust and we're third on the list. I don't think it's worth my time anymore. It feels like I'm in a race with Penn State and all these recruits. They want the guys I want. Steven Morris, we can't let them all go to Penn State. I swear, there they are again. Maryland's first game of the 2024-25 season is against UConn. It's pretty exciting to see the Huskies in the game. Drip check, drip check. This is what I'm talking about. Where is the checkered helmet? It is nowhere to be found. That is kind of an L, I'm not gonna lie. But that is okay because the Terps coming out. There's the fighting Terrapin as well. It's exciting to see the game in full 4K HD right here. Looking like the graphs took a major step up from NCAA 14 and it's showtime. The statue and the mascot, that's iconic. Rebuild officially underway, opening kickoff. Let's get 
after it. Nick Evers, the quarterback for UConn, and it is on Heisman difficulty, so anything can go. Even UConn might catch a break here and there. Down into the red zone, essentially, on this third down. Going for the big six. He hauls it in, and we're quickly down a touchdown. Crazy. Sheffield did that to us. Getting a feel for this Maryland team. This running back is a stud of a sophomore, and I want to get him loose. In the red zone, going to hit the RPO. Quick pass to our receiver, Felton. I'm not too worried about this team's ability to compete in year one. They have some tools, just need to put it all together. UConn should be a good warm up, to be honest, and we're just going to dump it out to the tight end. Touchdown. Let's go. The first score in our Maryland rebuild, ice in his veins. Can't be letting a team like UConn keep it close. That's not how it should be going. On second and 10 here, we're going to let Billy and the Terps cook. Going deep to Prather. He had him in plenty of steps to outrun bell touchdown let's go and i'm not gonna get bored looking at this mascot edwards on fire early in this one just gonna hit the slip screen let the blocks develop and get a few third and three at midfield just gonna hit the quick out he has him and just the yards we needed especially with this heisman difficulty you can't be afraid to take the check down from time to time it's what will keep you alive moving right down this field efficiently once again i'm gonna hit another check down coverage was getting tight out there tight end should be open across the middle wow he held on uh oh i did not read that route good at all low-key this sounds bad but i forget sometimes the route art when i select the play so i didn't know what was going to happen there but i knew exactly what was going to happen on this one slant just sprung free little heisman pose early in week one Okay. Offense been super efficient early, but it hasn't stopped UConn from also keeping things interesting. Within the goal to go area, I'm covering the tight end. He still drops it off to number 10 for a few. Run up the middle is probably my guess here, and it worked. Touchdown, UConn. It's all tied up. Not sure what is happening right now with UConn playing this close. It doesn't make sense. To me, it looks like the corner routes are getting sprung free as the read option also out of here. 28-28 is exactly why this team needs a rebuild. There's no reason we should be playing this close to UConn. Big third and seven. The Texas route is going to get open, but he missed. That's right. Sir Sponge doesn't come to coach this team without taking some chances, and that's exactly what he does here. Excuse me, I can't replay that. He was wide open but ran out of bounds unbelievable catching it but not keeping a foot in bounds is dirty work right there on third and five he got the first down this game's about to be over still have all the timeouts it's essential we get a stop on defense calling my timeouts along the way and making the conservative tackle third and 13 they just go right back to the ground game and he's wide open he's springing free let him score let him score let him score if he just got down he would have ran the clock out and we would have for sure lost now we have at least have a chance to go for two maybe score and go for two in insane blunder in the first week of this rebuild and i'm not gonna lie this is not my fault man i've thrown for four touchdown passes zero ints. gonna have my hands full with this rebuild i can say that much already passed midfield making for good work out here i didn't realize that was double double coverage and he caught it oh my gosh he seriously came down with that what's the flag here personal foul is it roughing the passer Oh my goodness, that's going to be a touchdown. Insane plays running rampant here in week one of the build. Wheatland's on fire at the linebacker position. Oh, user lurk, user lurk, let's go with 30 seconds left against UConn. This could be what we needed. And a sigh of relief, the crisis was averted in this one. 35 yards right down the middle. That thing is buzzing though. This is crazy intense. Good snap, good hold, bingo, Terps up. Wow, that was an entertaining week against UConn. They kept it way too close for comfort, but Billy and the boys, man, we were turning up. Turn up for the Terps. That's our new alliteration, Terps turn it up. That exciting game leveled us up twice. Going down my list, I just noticed that we know all of Kevin's interests, so I'm gonna get rid of send the house, and then I'm gonna go ahead and already hard sell him on the first week of recruiting. Let's go ahead and give him the the clutch, pro potential playing style and proximity to home. Then of course I should tack on, ooh, a visit would be good, but at least for now we'll DM him. Same thing with Merrill over here, get rid of the house. Let's go ahead and hard sell him. He's a gem DB, a three star that's gonna play up to like four star caliber. We can give him the, which one does he want? Hometown hero, that's right, from Virginia Beach. 
He wants to play for Maryland and as a hometown hero. Our next matchup is a Big Ten Conference game against Michigan State. These guys have the slight edge in overall. This one was a lot better, 30 to 13. Terps did not leave many questions on the field. Billy had an okay day. Hemby was solid, but Knotts came in for one play, 81 yards to the house. A lot of prospects are narrowing down to their final five. We're in there for a good amount of them, like Damian Baskerville. It's game time is the pitch we're going with. He is a gem running back. Akron's the only team we're competing with. I think we can get this guy and bring him in to be a difference maker. In a tight battle against Clemson, they're starting to pull away, so we have to spring into action. We're gonna need to give him the hard sell. And if I have points, it'd be good to schedule a visit because that'll help us get past Clemson if there's any hope left. Unfortunately for us with Earl, I'm gonna call it quits on the four star, save some points so I can go ahead and schedule some of those visits. I feel like I don't have time to wait on Nick, so we're gonna get him here against the FCS opponent. I know that's not very flashy of a game at all, but I gotta pull out the stops to get past Clemson. With Bruce Carney here, it's either coach's favorite or the prestige. I saw a couple other prospects with prestige. No one's been coach's fave yet. You never know, but I'm gonna hard sell Bruce on prestigious. Since I'm losing ground on Stephen Morris, I need to figure out if I can get back in the race. So he's also going to visit during the FCS week. CJ Perkins values playing style. We're at an F there. So I'm going to think twice about hard selling it. I had that happen one time and then we get locked out because he values something we can't give him. Instead, we're just going to keep sending the house and hope he commits by the end of the run. Finally, I know what Stephen Morris likes and I didn't want to get it wrong. So I took my time with him. I just hope I'm not too late. He wants the conference spotlight. Of the three three gym quarterbacks we have on our board. I think Jimmy is probably the best one. So I'm going to give him a trophy tour when we play USC. The first commit to Maryland is Darkies Merrill a gem corner from Virginia Beach, Virginia. And no way, we actually went out and got Steven Morris, the one we were in a battle with against Penn State. This dude is a star in the making. Bringing in the whole farm early, Nick Lowell, another top prospect of ours. What's better than one gem running back? Two gem running backs. Beautiful sight, knocking out some of our top targets. In the meantime, catching up on the last couple weeks, we took the L to Virginia. This rivalry game, we suffered an 18 point loss and somehow barely held on to FCS East 21-6. One of three quarterbacks just locked us out. Kevin Aguilera is going to go with Alabama, it looks like. Which is why I'm glad I still got Bruce Carney and Byron on the map. Rack them up, add another to the tally. Tyler Duggan. Bruce Carney, gem quarterback from Woodbridge, Virginia, is here. Seth Smith, staying in Maryland. And we are still number one on a lot of prospects boards. I'm heartbroken. We lost Jimmy Byron, our Maryland kid, to Penn State. So it paid off to have three quarterbacks on our board because the only one we were left with and we're rocking with is Bruce Carney, who looks good himself. He's a field general with 80 speed and the best throw power out of all three. You know what? This dude's gonna be cracked. As a field general archetype, he still has 80 speed. Late gem find in Kevin Leverett. And Colby Coat up in here. Thank goodness no one's been sweating down this guy's throat. We put in a lot of hours on the five stars and we finally have the ability to be confident in hard selling. I had CJ Perkins visiting us next week, but he couldn't wait any longer. Pulling the trigger. At four and two, Maryland is taking on USC, the newest a big 10 team trojans are 17th ranked in the nation we have a lot of prospects visiting so there is a lot at stake no rest for our guys till we get the win let's go terps big third down right here secure catch on the sideline first in red zone forced to go to work and we'll dump it out to howard cut up field fourth and two we're gonna run the speed option and pitch it out to our running back mcdonald lower the head get forward Yes, sir. You gotta take big risks in big game as McDonald's finishes it. If we win, it's a major influence bonus on our visitors. And if we lose, it's not as bad. But we ain't talking about losing out here. That's loser talk. We're all about winning and Howard is too. Play action, let's see if something can develop here. I saw that DT from a mile away. Man was sweating all down our throat there. In this case, it's better to take the field goal. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So far, so good with the meter. Let's hope we can get the home field advantage behind us in this one. We need all the help we can get. Scrambling out to our right. I don't know if Billy's like that, but he was able to get it to McDonald for the first down. McDonald took a nasty shot. His wear and tear meter went down in a big way. That's probably a pick. 
Oh, man. Our first big blunder of the game. End of the third quarter. We have a chance here. Let's lob one up to the back of the end zone for the big man. He came down with it, but out of bounds. We've seen that a couple times now, haven't we? This should get open. Howard Redemption. They scored quickly, and we have to finish this game off by getting down the field and first down. Huge third down. We need to pull something out here, or else they're going to quickly get back in it. Beautiful. No. Hold on to it. Here we go. Fourth down. Trying to show the cover two. And it's out of reach. So they make the completion. Fourth quarter blunder. Am I right? Let's just launch one. I see our receiver getting a step. Oh, come on. We're not connecting. This has been a terrible time to not get on the same page as our teammates. Fourth and two. I think we need this one. And bad. Let's go across the middle to Howard. Field goals won't cut it. We need touchdowns. And that's it. Oh, I missed a wide open man. And threw an interception and said circle was wide. I literally hit the wrong button. And that's going to do it. Bummer indeed. I had a guy wide open. The circle was open on that last play across the middle. And I hit the wrong guy. Despite the loss, Greg McCormick, Mike Breckner commit to Maryland. Hold the phone, Mitch Hicks has arrived. This five-star corner is upgrading our secondary in a big way. Three-star gems like Colby Coat will also play nicely. Literally gems in the rough, just sitting there on the recruiting board, not getting swooped up. So I'ma swoop them up and send the house on every single one of them. Even this four-star bust with 70 speed, 83 power move, 89 strength, that doesn't look too shabby. Ain't no way, the man with a deal breaker F just committed to us. I thought we were gonna lose Aguilera to Alabama. Now we got two gem quarterbacks to battle it out for QB1. Bang, Melvin Bailey from Pittsburgh, another five-star cornerback has arrived. And you know what? This is gonna be the no-fly zone. We had so many freshmen this year and now add two more five-star freshmen. Conference championship week, Maryland's not in it, sadly. Finishing the year six and six. However, Quincy is a big gem tight end that will be coming to the team. Jackson Arnold, this is not the first time I've seen him win the Heisman. Even with the six win season, we got Oklahoma State at the Alamo Bowl. That's a pretty good one. Honestly, about what I expected in year one, Maryland in the Big Ten was gonna have their hands full. So let's see if we can go ahead and give Oklahoma State some trouble in the Alamo Bowl. This Cowboy team does have Ollie Gordon and some other stars, so we gotta watch out for that. But there we go, fresh patch and all. Bring out the Terps. Opening drive, we gotta dump it out to Hemby, the sophomore running back. He's gonna have some competition next year and his injuries didn't help him. Was afraid something like this would happen. Down quickly to the Cowboys, they're looking for more. Of course, you gotta watch out for Ollie Gordon when you're in the red zone as he plunges in. If we can go ahead and win this game, I would be shocked, but I'm not gonna bank on it as Howard gets it's wide open. Third and nine, slip screen to Ollie Gordon with those wheels. He is gone, deking the defenders and all. Talk about a cheat code in the game when you got Ollie. Strong flood out to Knots, first down. Starting to cook a little bit. Let's go back to Howard. I like that connection. Running up to the line. We got a step on the DB. Will he be able to come down with it? Yes, sir. But trust me, you won't believe how easy it was for the pokes to tear up our defense. So I'm excited to bring in a fresh class. Secondary should literally be the new no fly zone if I had to put my money on it. Sometimes it'd be like this. We make a little comeback, but it's far too late. Finishing off the season six and seven. That's kind of brutal, but it's only up from here. Congrats to the Pokes. They had a good season. Adding to a loaded class. Welcome, Danny Doyle. End of season. It looks like we have some players hitting the portal. I need to convince some guys like Hemby to stay. Let's check it out. He decided to stay. Okay, Hemby's here. Cornerback, this would be good to keep him here if we can, but he didn't get persuaded. That's okay. Like I said, a lot of five-star and talent coming on the way. Michael Harris, the left outside linebacker, we would like to keep him. I'll let Champ Long transfer out. And sure, why not? I'll use my last two persuasions on left tackle and this backup tight end. The portal is open. The first thing I'm doing, however, is hard selling all of my high school prospects in the running here. Only one option with this guy's interest, it's coach's face. Always good to look at the portal and one of the top guys out there, four-star Stefan Daly, coming from Kent State, wants to join the team. Scouting him out, he looks pretty good. 88 speed, 95 strength, 90 excel. This is a fast left end. A right end previously from Alabama and then a running back from Duke. We'll add those guys to our board. One week in the books, Joshua Harbin's committed. I didn't get a notification or anything, but I just noticed that Damian Baskerville, our verbal commit, flipped to Akron. At least I still have four star Steven Morris. I've never taken a second to assess some of the top classes, but are you kidding me? Alabama, five five stars and 28 four stars. They're playing on rookie mode out here. But year one for Maryland wasn't too shabby, too 
five stars, 11 four stars, 14 three stars with some good gems mixed in throughout. Mitch Hicks and Melvin Bailey holding it down with Terrell, a four star late addition as well. Jalen Husky, our best cornerback, 84 overall. We're gonna move him to free safety because that now makes way for three true freshmen to be atop the depth chart. Plus free safety just needed some help over here. It's time Sir Sponge evolves into a motivator as well. We know his secondary is young and hot, so let's get the hot hand locked in all the way. Turning the page to another year, we got some more prospects to fill out our board and look at Greg Ficken here. We found our next batch of 35, highlighted by Greg Ficken, five-star right end, and Jam Emmanuel Sweat. Another one, Morris Bingham. Offense alignment looked promising early in this class. I really just wasted all that scouting points on a kicker. Although he's a bust, I just offered a scholarship to Dan Emery, and he insta-committed. Does not look all that great, though. First look at this class, there are a lot of gem linemen, and that is exactly what we need to beef up. Taking a year two leap already up to an 85 overall. This is week one against FAU. Bring on the Owls. This year, we have a few freshmen in key roles, but you'll see more of an impact next season as right off the dime, touchdown. On defense here, Husky looking to make a stop. The quarterback is breaking multiple tackles. First and goal. Looking to stop the run, and that'll do. Young guys everywhere, like Flowers, the redshirt freshman linebacker, getting his first season of starting action. On third and goal, the Owls are gonna send the running back in motion. It's definitely a pass. I don't know how that was so open. Keep that name on the line, Azuma, 80 87, the tight end. I put him in as the second string because he has 88 speed for a tight end. Could not connect on the last one, but we should have plenty more opportunities. And Octavia Smith went up and dropped it. That was a tough ball. Seriously was. So was that one did not convert. Supposedly the team is better this year, but we're getting shown up right now by the Owls. Gonna need some help out here. White, there we go. Get a drive sustaining. Just about midfield. Gonna dump it to the running back. Hemby out of the backfield. Great catch and run. See what Edwards can do in his senior season at quarterback. He'll look to the tight end, but there's a linebacker just lurking it all the way. If there's any chance of winning this one, the comeback has to start right now. White fought his way through that. Gonna hit Octavius with the slant play. He holds on. Let's dump it out to the freshman tight end with 88 speed as he burns his way through. I'm gonna go ahead and audible, put him on a slant, see if he can get some separation. Didn't get open, but Hemby did. He's fighting, fighting down to the one. Now at the one, this jet touch pass should go. Let's cut it up. Third and 13. This is a massive play. Need the stop against these FAU pesky owls. And we're really just going to let him run through like that. Because of that, we're stunned in week one. That is not the start we want for year two. Before we get any further into year two, let's look at some of the freshmen we brought in from the last recruiting portal and check out their development trait and what they're best at. Bruce Carney brought him in and he's a star development trait that is a rare find the mentals and physicals as a true freshman he is well on his way oh my goodness forget it i might have to move kevin aguilera up on the depth chart he is elite development trait that is the rarest find to put it in perspective billy edwards or 81 overall quarterback is an impact dev trait so those other two guys in the wings much faster progression stephen morris with star dev good looking running back quincy azuma 88 speed at tight end is a star tyler duggins an impact player and he's looking crazy with the crop. Max Martino, 75 overall impact. Ian Pickering, a star. Joshua Harvin, also a star. Manuel Urban, same thing. Danny Doyle, you already know. Same with his backup, Nick, another star. Now for the five stars, cornerback Melvin Bailey is a star and 79 overall. Mitch Hicks was the other and he comes in at impact. So if you couldn't tell, my money is on this class to take us to the promised land. Let the recruits come early. Emmanuel Sweat, Morris Bingham, two offensive line gems off the rip. Now for recruiting purposes, since we've already gone through the ringer in year one and I've shown you a bit of year two. I'm not going to show you as much going forward because you already know what's going to be going on in the background. We're going to focus more on gameplay and developing this team towards the national championship. Highlight signee. We wanted beef. We got beef. Big week against the Huskies. This team is evenly matched. We're both 85 overall. So it should be a good one on paper. Now, both teams, Maryland and the Huskies, have lost two games in the early season. I understand the Big Ten is tough, but I feel like this is underperformance at its finest right now. Here comes Hemby, and yeah, he needs to put in a lot of work today to save my job. I don't want to be in the hot seat. If things start going south, I'm probably going to have to go a youth movement out here. But Hemby says, I'll get you, coach. i am got... Wow, that was some good move. Pass midfield. We're going to see if anyone can spring open and deep. Going to go to Octavia Smith. 
tough one. I'm well aware how difficult it is to convert on a bang eight route. So you don't have to tell me twice. I knew I threw a pick, but come on, what is actually the problem out here to go down 21-0? Edwards ice cold. Hemby just needs to get more involved, man. Third in goal. Will someone spring free? I think in the back of the end zone, it was a risky one. Intercepted. Well, I guess you could say this rebuild has a long way to go still. 42-13. Washington destroyed us on our home turf. Maryland regressed in year two. Five and seven. Christopher Vizinha, the sophomore from Clemson, got the Heisman. At risk of losing some players to the portal. We don't want to go backwards. We got to keep some of our guys. Just felt like to me, Billy Edwards wasn't anything special this year. Redshirt freshman Makai White was the only bright spot. Defense too. Nothing to write home about this last season. Kevis Thomas, the junior 80 overall corner, wants to get out of here. I don't blame him. I told him a lot of freshmen were on the way, so he didn't want to get all caught up in that as well as mj morris i'm not even going to try to persuade him to come back now low key it's a very low chance but might as well use our persuasion attempt and it fails do want to try to keep daniel wingate here we have some good right outside linebackers as well in the wings and at least we got some mentorship from this guy redshirt freshman corner here brayden lee i kind of want to keep him if we can and a very low chance was still successful octavian smith didn't have the big year we expected from him so someone in the nfl took a sixth round flyer in the portal i'm going to continue to build the scary secondary we have with Brandon and Levane. And as always, beefing up on the offensive line. Got some good options here. This sophomore transfer, Cooper Young, 90 lead block, 91 strength, 89 pass block power. Looks good. Carter on the other side at left guard looks just as good too. Sending them all we got. Well, that was quick. Both of them left us for Penn State. 86 overall going into year three. This is a make or break year in my opinion. We have a lot of guys looking to transfer that are some good players too. So we need to make a good impression. Need to keep recruiting recruiting going strong in the background so this team has depth at a lot of different angles good amount of four stars we're just putting our name in the hat it might as well go for this five star Let's see what mitchell zeman's about caleb cloud a gem receiver with 91 speed 94 agility a couple busts here but they're still four star talent so they'll probably be a three star solid player gem jeremiah klug running back 93 speed this would be a fun name to call out in the season klug plugging it up the middle insta commit from right tackle tackle George, a four-star prospect, wanted all that. Gregory McNutt busted all over the place, and he's not a four-star after all. First game of year three against Georgia Southern. This Terps team is solid. We have 80s across the board and up on defense. The only question mark is the quarterback battle that's about to ensue. On the road, this should be a good warm-up for the guys because there is a tough slate ahead once more with ranked Ohio State and others that are just looming around the corner. First look at Aguilera. I put him at the top top of the depth chart because he had the elite development trait. So I figured we need to get him as many reps as possible. And he's connecting with his friend from the portal. Sorry, not portal. That is his friend from the same recruiting class out here. Who's Azuma getting the starting job at tight end as a sophomore. Also on the far right, you'll see Leverett out there. He came from the same class. He's up to about an 80 overall looking to do a good work this year. Right down to second and goal. Looking for anyone. We'll go to Azuma but there he is. The connection is strong early. Beautiful. One of our recruits also has a star underneath his name at the defensive end position. And what a whiff job in the secondary. We're supposed to be the terrifying Terps in the secondary. Well, it didn't look like it on that one. Just going to go ahead and try to cash in with Hemby. Wow, stuffed. Forcing Aguilera to get crafty with his mobility. Scrambling to the left. We dodge one defensive lineman. Swerve out of the other. Huge touchdown. Darn right. That's exactly what I expect to see from an elite developing improviser. As Azuma is going to be a favorite, I can tell. Looking for points before halftime. I want to see what this team is made of. Of. Lobbin went up to white. He is gone. Touchdown. Yes, I know this is Georgia Southern, but I've been waiting to see some big plays from this group, and it's feeling good to finally see it. Third down. Need a conversion to officially ice this one. Why not go for more than just the icing on the cake? Leverett, big bomb. That is the connection from the recruiting portal. I knew we had some studs waiting in the wings, and it's year three. They're finally stepping up their game as starters. Aguilera, great performance in your first ever start. Take it on Nebraska in this one. We're four Four and four at the midway point. I can't believe, I think the Sims cooked at times. I fast forwarded like UConn and a couple other games and we lost. 
lost games we should have won two minute drill our quarterback is getting cold and that is extremely dangerous to throw that into triple coverage essentially we get another chance here in the third quarter stadium rocking we can't convert pulse is going crazy the kicking meter is going crazy I think we nailed it. Game is on the line. What a big moment for the freshman quarterback. There is a lot on his mind, I'm sure. Having a hard time getting the audible through. This place is a rocking crowd. And my gosh, what was that? A throwaway interception touchdown. Miraculously, even after all that, we have another chance to go ahead and try to win, except what was this? Holding on the offense. It's going to come back, or I guess you could decline it. It's an interception, so... Wow, Nebraska rattled us big time. Two year extension after another mediocre season. Six wins in year three. Man, this is not going the way I thought it would. We were invited to play in the quick lane bowl against Miami of Ohio. I'm not gonna play this one. We gotta get better. Redshirt freshman Kevin Aguilera put up 36 touchdown passes, 3,700 yards. That's a good season. Essentially no support on the ground. That's wild. But Kai White and Kevin Leverett, two young receivers. As Neo Avery had 14 and a half sacks, and Michael Harris had nine. Braden Lee, three ints. Good news is this team's really young, so at seven and six in year three, we should continue to surge upward. I'm just surprised it's taken a couple extra years to get past mediocrity. I mean, it was this close against Virginia Tech, somehow got blown out by UConn, UCLA took us out. But in the quick lane bowl, our guy Kevin, five touchdown passes, cooked the Red Hawks. I have been focusing less on recruiting, more on motivating because some of these perks give off-season training boosts, and that's exactly what we need. Unfortunately, this is bad news with three really good players wanting to transfer. Yep, there they all go. Two middle linebackers as well. We need them to stay. That was a position of need. Please, Flowers, what do you got for me? Urban, at least you, please. Maybe Brayden. All of them are out of here. That's tough. Our class is okay. Haven't been too ambitious going for five stars, but we do got guys like Klug and McNutt leading the way. Not many transfers interested in us, so we just took what we can get. Highlighting a couple James Madison receivers and what else was available. A ton of athletes in this recruiting class where guys like McNutt are ready to step in and make a difference. Scrambling quarterback Troy might as well just get another backup in there. I don't know if this is a glitch, but I feel like I'm seeing regression across the board for some of these players. Training results go up and be one. I think some people went down one or two it's crazy looks like we're not the only team that's been struggling penn state five and seven rutgers five and seven iowa five and seven oregon nine and five virginia tech five and seven however i believe if this team can get hot we can go on a run first game at home is against jmu let's bring out the terps man we have to get some early momentum this game is super momentum based if you start winning the players start doing better overall we'll start to spike up but the opposite is also true. We start losing, we start playing worse, we're gonna tank. Dukes are on the road. We're trying to take them down here. Third and goal, big sack. Offense stuttering a bit early in this one. Azuma couldn't hold on. One of our receivers out here has 99 speed and I need to know who it is because that is gonna be important for us to utilize. Now, can we just talk about the improvised play right there? That is an elite quarterback, if I've seen one. Taking a sack, but yet staying up. That was crazy, man. Good work. As we drop it down to White, who's got space to just run wild. Makai White is a big-time receiver on this team, as who let him open again? He's out of there. Touchdown. Red zone football. Let's just dump it out to the receiver who's waiting patiently. That sets up third and manageable, jumping it out to the running back, first and goal. Now we can go ahead and hit this one quick over the middle. Bro, that was inaccurate out of reach got a couple minutes left in this game there's a first down conversion to mclaurin and jmu fresh out of timeouts something big here would go a long way as he's hit under pressure touchdown our tight end this game's over and i'm glad the terps came to play in this one but because i can and i'm a little greedy wanting more momentum for my group i'm going for it on fourth down and that play worked to perfection good week to start off the season with a big win 35-10. Next team to stroll right up into Maryland is the Kennesaw State Owls, and they are a pretty good unit, 1-0 this season, as McKelvin is out of there. Big play. First and goal. Quick strike to Azuma. 
touchdown. Surprisingly, Kennesaw defense has been pretty good in this one, and they've been putting on a clinic. Just wanted to confirm that McLaurin is the 99 speed receiver on this team. He doesn't have much separation on this play but I'm sure we'll connect here soon. And now that the DB's pressing up on him a bit more, it is a star Kennesaw State player, but 99 speed is 99 speed. If I didn't get hit there, I don't know if that would have connected. I guess only one way to test that theory. It's time to do it again, except he didn't get open on that one. And out of reach is serious, bro. Essentially just cost the team a few points there, but we can redeem it right there if he turned around not sure why he didn't bother looking at the ball that hit him right in the buttocks man but azuma big shifty move let's go hurrying up to the line sending an all go let's see if anyone gets some separation out here up and over to the big tight end he caught it and he stays up on his feet that is a crazy touchdown broke three guys and got in there that'll get the guys fired up for sure and there's 99 speed mclaurin just hitting the outside essentially we have our own tyreek hill so of course i'm gonna use him except for when the safety baits us down low there oh i don't know if it's just me but this game can be difficult with especially the interceptions going on in the end we get the win despite letting owls back into the game a win is a win we're 2-0 good start this is a rainy game against the oregon ducks in maryland oregon is a top ranked team so this is a big test they are the better team right now but we can go ahead and pop that thing with a strip fumble points are difficult to come by in this one so i'm just gonna throw one up to 99 speed mclaurin that is a cheat code touchdown in the rain and everything don't mess with him and that is not the first time we've seen that animation that's crazy that i get popped and picked the pressure from the d-line is immense however mclaurin again might have a step on everyone Deja vu, this is insane. 99 speed, Tyreek Hill out here. Down by a couple scores, it is the third quarter. We're gonna need to lob this one up to White, who's got a lane. Here we go, red zone. Clock winding down, let's go ahead and hit our tight end in the corner of the end zone. He got his feet inbounds, let's go. Fourth and 11, desperate need for anything here. That should work for at least the first down and last second hope. But fourth and 18, looking pretty bleak, couldn't even get it off. Oregon gets past us 35-21 they keep their ride alive terps with six wins having their best season since sir sponge has taken them over finally a glimpse of promise now it's a big game against the Rutgers, a rivalry one so this will be telling if we're ready to take the next step oh yeah and did i forget to mention we're now ranked 21st in the nation moving up in the world and we're gonna have a convoy in front of us big run third and ten i've been impressed by aguilera not impressed by the defensive pressure. O-line needs to do better holding up going forward. But we'll take the 3-0 lead. Right here in the red zone across the middle, there's McLaurin, touchdown. DB pressing up on McLaurin here. Let's see if our Tyreek Hill can win it. Not in this case, as we break free, but can't break free of everyone. Stadium's getting loud, pressure getting to us. I'm just gonna let one fly deep. Will 99 speed be the difference? It will over the star. Let's just say I hope I got McLaurin for one more season after this, because man has been a stud. Same with our tight end. All right, back at it again. Gonna go over the middle to our our tight end can't hang in there third and 11 this looks like a massive blitz coming in and thankfully we got white slipping through second and 10 let's just hit it here that's williams free and getting the first fresh set scrambling scrambling looking throwing he's almost got it i thought surely the db was gonna try to make a play on it but anyways ray is wide open trying to make a move breaking ankles getting into the end zone we're tied up this rivalry game has been living up to the hype Rutgers are putting up a fight indeed. Second and four, what's it gonna be? We'll just dump it to the running back who falls on the ground. Surely that is not what I meant to happen. Third and two, my bad on that last one. Um, this time you can go ahead and fall down for the first. At least we secured that, cause that's important. And now we'll go to McKelvin, who's got a good amount of space to work it. Beautiful, that is what we like to see. Gonna dump it underneath the McLaurin, more yards, another first. I think they know a run's coming, but we're still gonna give it to him as Ray breaks free, gets us a solid four. 30 something yard field goal, I still don't feel comfortable about it. I wanna get more so I can get a better chance to just 
just get in there and why not get the touchdown while we're at it just sending everyone back with nine seconds left we already know they're gonna go for it all and that is gonna stop short with four seconds left they have to try it big and he's not even gonna get it off so that's game what a win on the road in hostile territory terps are on the come up in just in time 15th series win between maryland and Rutgers. kevin turned it up six touchdown passes as exciting as the finish was our team stuttered in the last couple games losing gas and now we're in the cheese it bowl against alabama and that's how you know our team is on the verge we take down alabama at the cheese it bowl this next year we're going all in it has to be this next year or bust oh my goodness kevin already going to the nfl i was counting on this dude to take us to the natty next year and if i can't persuade him we don't he's gonna be a first round pick i mean congrats to him thankfully we have one other guy in the wings will he be the truth for our team straight to the nfl for kevin after his sophomore campaign first round pick he's gonna be good 3700 yards 35 touchdowns that's nice at least we got mclaurin for our next season well 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 look who wants to come back from the portal manuel urban was playing for western michigan after he transferred from us now he wants to come back some other solid guys as well here like alani day william anderson and freeman be good to get all of them losing our qb was massive but even still this is the best team we've put together by far we have high 80s across the board at every single position i don't expect us to lose many games we have high 80s like i said everywhere on both sides of the ball one of our recent recruits from the previous year troy campanero he is a freshman redshirt quarterback with 90 speed 92 excel 95 throw power and solid 80 accuracies to me that has got to be qb1 even over our junior that has 86 speed and 93 throw power i believe the window to compete is open now and troy is going to be the one to take us there Fred shirt freshman read option touchdown on the first drive with the mid 80 overall team you'll see quickly as we do well this overall is going to blossom to like almost a 90 by the end of the season just to keep it real and transparent with some of y'all recruiting is very tedious so i did not take every single week seriously which is why i'm probably not flirting around a 90 overall before getting hot i have been doing just enough to find some guys but at the same time as you've all probably experienced yourself you could probably be doing a lot more if you're manually paying attention every single player every single week so what i'm trying to say is that i have not been paying attention every single player every single week but that is a great catch by one guy i did pay attention to tobin is a freshman tight end that we just put out here true freshman i don't know what happened to our other guy he must have got hurt but what i like about tobin is he's a 90 speed 94 speed tight end i don't know where our senior tight end is that we've been using all the way up to this point he must have got hurt but anyways we'll go to mclaurin because you know he's like tyree kill as you've noticed the big connection did not hit but we'll just go to our running back mckelvin who's over the middle splitting the defense big play it was exciting to see this freshman win the job in the spring game and he is cooking at every level finding tobin too for a touchdown 21 7 let's just lob one up let's see if he can make a play are you kidding me i'm gonna say it tobin feels certified i like how he feels as a tight end also really enjoying our freshman quarterback who's doing a great job so far through the game I haven't had to scramble too much yet but i want to see what he's made of when he has to he doesn't need it on that one touchdown this offense is hot and let's go up the middle there's the senior leading the way on the slant he's got a step there's leverett one of our first ever recruit signees up the middle insurance points boom wrapped this thing up 42 35 virginia tech a little bit scary there towards the end but hey freshman has confidence and let's keep it rolling throughout the entirety of the season nothing like your first start leading to a big 10 offensive player of the week accolade another year down the drain i'm gonna keep it a buck i didn't realize that every week was gonna require so much manual attention so in essence i haven't rebuilt maryland yet i do have one last trick up my sleeve that i'm gonna explore for the next season but that will be it as we take a last look at our 84 overall team with 86 offense not the best for big 10 play but three and a half stars of prestige we're about to lose doyle 
our stud right outside linebacker. So I'm in shambles right now, which is why I said I have one more year and I know how to turn it around. The only bright spot from this last season was our freshman quarterback, 35 touchdowns, seven ints, 3,300 yards, not that bad. Looks like Georgia beat SMU in the final game, which is insane. SMU having the rebuild we need. Really didn't wanna see Danny Doyle leave us. He was really good, 88 overall, and there's just nothing I can do about it unless, yeah, that slim chance worked. Don't really care if Larry leaves, he can go. Try to get Lovelace, and I don't know if I care about Craig either. A lot of our OG recruits have graduated, and I'm gonna keep it a buck. I thought some of these guys were 90 plus overall bound, but since this is my first full rebuild, I've learned a lot along this journey. As some of our guys get swooped up in the NFL draft. Trading results are in. We have our first 90 overalls. Ricky and Justin Allman, 93 overall apiece. 84 across the board. The team's still decent, but this is definitely the final year. I think I've regressed from a couple years ago. So you might be wondering to yourself, how am I still gonna finish this rebuild and call it a rebuild? Well, for one, I'm not gonna call this a rebuild anymore. This is my first full dynasty experience and I've already learned that I need to slow down and understand that this is gonna be a 10 to 12 hour plus grind minimum. I tried to speed through some of the seasons, not fully scouting, recruiting, doing as good as I could at that first season, which cost me in the long run, leaving Maryland mediocre even at this point in time. But here's how I'm gonna get my last chance. Looking across the board at teams like K-State that are 81 overall, but sixth strength in the nation, we're better than a lot of schools out here. But I've made up my mind, this is how Maryland gets to the college football playoffs in one last crack at glory. Maryland, welcome to Conference USA. I know, I'm sure this is not a popular move, but this video has been going on forever and I'm struggling to get the grasp of Dynasty so I need to find a way to conclude it and maybe I can end it on a positive note, getting you guys a national championship the hard way through the playoff bracket. Ah, take a look at that Conference USA schedule. Love to see it. Still gonna need to show up to Virginia Tech and prove that we can win it. Still haven't figured out off-season training because after my quarterback threw 35 touchdown pass, seven ins in like 3,300 yards, he got no overall boost. The stadium is packed as they're ready to see the newest Conference USA team in action. Toledo is here and it's time to fly. Toledo there's no pushover. We can't be sleeping on these guys because they have a comparable team in this division as Tobin getting absolutely jiggy. We're going to see Maryland brand of football as we take on opponent week after week. Sometimes you got to take a step back before you can go forward. And we're about to see a dominant brand of football through the Conference USA route. So 100%, you could still say it. We took Maryland out of mediocrity to win and win big this is like a cheat code right now playing in this conference almost feels like we're at a different overall a different ranking it literally feels like we're not on the hardest difficulty of the game anymore because it's just coming much easier than anyone in the big 10. for the rest of the league i just say they hate us because they ain't us and if you want to compete get your game up totally not like we got recruits from the big 10 and brought them down to this conference no not at all these guys have been ready to play for a long time now and they want it bad. I think I passed the line of scrimmage there. Onward, we go finding an opening any which way. All I gotta say is I'm sorry, Toledo, that I had to do it to you. Not much else to see in this one. That's a wrap. Our guy, Troy, player of the week. The Riverside Royals beat us last season, so I'm low-key scared to sim it, but we're gonna see what happens. And that's what's up. Back-to-back -back player of the week, Troy went off. Safe to say we won that one too. Let's go prove we're not just a fluke in the Conference USA, but we can hang with ranked teams like Virginia Tech. This place is rocking. Inter Sandman, a Virginia Tech classic. This is big stage football got the confidence we need 2 and 0 to start the young season now we're here to beat virginia tech quick touchdown first and goal once more when we got the heisman candidate out here you expect big things this is nuts man we got a sophomore quarterback absolutely balling out our main man we lost to the nfl draft would absolutely be cooking right now if he was still here but i'm a fan of what troy is able to do on the gridiron let's run a play action see if troy can find someone and he might have someone get free if he can just get there second down for troy he has a man getting free out of reach again i think that's partly on me with the left stick if i had to guess uh-oh 
way undercut there. Virginia Tech making it a little bit of a ball game here, but we can go ahead and pat it on with McKelvin out of there. Game on the line, quick out here to the receiver number zero. At quarterback for Virginia Tech is Nolan Aikman. I don't think he's related to Troy Aikman, but that is a pretty cool coincidence. Two minutes to go in the ball game, and we can get a stop right here. Touchdown, Hokies. Out of the two minute warning, we're gonna go back at it with Schneik getting the catch and the run, air hurdling and deking. Big play. Let's go ahead and dump it on a slip screen. Could get, oh wow, he did get around him. I was about to say about to get stuff. Back over the middle, there he is. McKelvin's got a lot of green grass ahead of him. All the way down into first and goal. Coach adjustments, let's chew clock. I think I should score, but not on the first play or second play. In fact, we should take all their timeouts and the clock down as much as we can. Fresh out of timeouts and we fall flat. Final few seconds and let's hit it. No problem in within 20 yards. Wow, okay, Virginia Tech got all the way down into field goal range and they drop it. Last chance, fourth and eight, gun empty for the Hokies. They convert on the slant. They're out of timeouts and it looks like we choke giving up the field goal, but we have one second, time expiring. We connect with Leverett. This is ball game with no time left. Touchdown, Terps. Hokie fans can't believe what just hit them the senior receiver that's been with us this whole time from the first class hits it with the dagger turbo mode five and oh in the season taking on a four and oh 16th ranked sam houston this small stadium is gonna be packed for a top 25 bearcat team there they are. All netted up seven a piece. Easy touchdown to Klug. Y'all remember Klug and Plug, don't you? He's a stud. And the quarterback, 16, out of there, holds on first down. Usering Ailman here, the 93 overall middle linebacker. He's super fast, but it doesn't matter because he's hunted down by the D-line. Troy hits the tight end so wide open. Tobin is a 93 speed tight end like I've mentioned. He plays just like a receiver too fast. There really is no worries when you go up against Sam Houston. Sorry, guys. Stacking up these two rosters, it's just hard to find anyone that's comparable to the players we have on the Terps side of the ball. In fact, Leverett's going to showboat a little and still break it. All right, I'm going to challenge myself to scramble here with Troy. So let's step up the pocket through the middle. Touchdown. So much for a ranked Sam Houston team. They're no longer alive. Big win. Terps are all amped about this one. Just landed three four stars and still in the race for a couple five stars with Conference USA conference level. Don't know why the sim just did us dirty to Louisiana Tech. We lost by three. Good to see my guy Sweat getting national recognition. I remember plucking him as an athlete and then throwing him over to left end. Troy is that guy. Right now we're nowhere to be found in this football playoff picture. For now it's time to focus on Liberty as we head on the road. These guys are never a easy out. Kevin getting the spotlight. He's had 800 yards, 11 touchdowns so far. The crazy part to me right now is Liberty at three and six. That sounds unheard of. Let's go ahead and get McKelvin in motion. See if he can cut up field. Third and seven. Just going to go ahead and air one out. Pretty deep. Very inaccurate. I don't know why it went all the way over there. Fourth and seven. Over the middle. Securing it is Schneck. Let's go ahead and hike it. Lob one up to Tobin. He's wide open. He stays up. Keeps the balance down the sideline. You're not catching him. Not a chance. Fourth and inches. Just need to go straight up the middle and pick up. Not even a yard. But we'll take more than that if we can get it. And let's keep this thing going. On the run. Delivering to Leverett. Fighting forward. Should be nothing but touchdown ahead for Troy. Dumping it to McKelvin again. This man is shifty and solid out of the backfield. When I see McKelvin, I low-key get Danny Woodhead vibes, and wow, we're under so much pressure. We turn it over. Send in the verticals. There is Tobin again. He is just super fast. It's an assignment for anyone to track him down, so I don't blame linebackers that are struggling. Who's not struggling, though, is the DB on that play as he gets hit-staked and recovered a dumb fumble. Down by three, this game has turned a little bit out of the direction we wanted it to go. For the sake of the college football playoffs, we just can't afford to lose this game. That is for sure. So it's a good thing I don't plan on losing this game because we're going to go over the middle to Malvux and get to the first and goal line. Third and goal, cash money. Not sure how or why, but Liberty has been turning it up in the fourth quarter. So can we. 
we too can play at that game. There we go, all said and done. Burning Liberty's remaining timeouts. Even if we don't get a first down here, they're gonna have a lot of work to do. 40 yard field goal, cash. That should be nailed through. Flag on the play, roughing the kicker, accept the penalty. Now we can take a knee. You done goofed up there, buddy. Your team just got costed the chance to win it. Just need to survive one more week and we'll have the four seed secured. FIU is the only one that stands between us. And I'm trusting the sim to do its thing. Conference USA Championship game. We're 11th in the nation, taking on number 21, Sam Houston. I've never seen Maryland fans more excited about their team until this year. Stadium's packed, everything's buzzing out here. Conference USA logos, patches, everything updated on the field. It don't matter, we're having a good time. Brutal way for Sam. Am Houston to go out, shut out conference USA championship game. Terps are moving to the national championship playoffs. So for all my Maryland fans, you guys are champs. Only a sophomore, but Grant Tobin won the 2029 best tight end award. Emmanuel Sweat was sweaty on the defensive line, 15 sacks. So we're chilling on bye week as the rest of the bracket will face off. North Texas somehow cracked in in the last spot. Full circle moment, we get to play Big Ten football in the college football playoff, Huskies on deck. Peach Bowl is what we're after national championship is ultimately the final destination base set here he's gonna go out to his receiver we whiff on the tackle touchdown huskies up first carney is forced to play as i don't know where our other guy went he must have just left it's end of the season so i wonder if there are bowl game opt-outs for whatever reason it's the national championship anything goes and i'm playing with an unfamiliar quarterback thank goodness troy came back in i was about to say i don't know what i'm gonna do with a quarterback i have no idea how to play with i'm glad troy didn't opt out it wouldn't have made sense to me as i miss a guy wide on the sack third and 18 we're just gonna hand it off and see if we can do anything no nope. huskies are dominating us right now third down we'll just go ahead and throw a pick flag i wonder if it's roughing the passer instead it's holding so that's against us anyway 40 to 0 defeat in the peach bowl we got all the way to the playoffs and lost it this was just a big learning moment so i hope you enjoyed the content anyway soaked it up with king sponge but we're gonna have to find a way to get back around to maryland at some point or another and do it the right way we can say we got the terps to the playoffs but we couldn't get it all in this one that's going to do it for now, or I'm going to go crazy continuing to record this video. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button and leave a like. I'll catch y'all in the next.